Transportation in the 21st century. What's it all about? Where is it going? And what's in it for you? Transportation professionals are meeting today's demands and charting our course to tomorrow through extensive planning, cutting edge technology, and life saving innovations. Pressed with the deadline of the Olympic Winter Games in 2002, Salt Lake City, Utah accepted the challenge of updating an aging transportation system with one that is state of the art. Open your mind. Um, for the Winter Games, we have um, looked at all the different events that are going to be held. We've figured out how many people are, are going to be going to each of the events, what time, you know, what kind of mode they're going to use to get there, whether it's going to be bus, car, plane, train, automobile. <laughs> We've done a lot of computer modeling to predict uh, traffic flow uh, during the Olympics. And we'll actually be looking day by day, hour by hour. Boston, the big dig. This engineering marvel is redesigning the city. By putting a highway system underground, Boston will be a modern mecca that will be beautiful, convenient, and easy to get around. I think what interests me about the job is uh, the, the two phases of problem solving. Here you start with a plan. You want to build um, a piece of highway to point from point A to point B. You've got to come up with a plan, and that's one side of the problem solving. And then once you get out the construction, everything, of course, is, uh, is different than what you put on paper. So you take your general approach and your plan that you've already had approved, and you run into problems with obstructions underground or problems with uh, a design not working exactly as you thought and so on. And then you have a second round of problem solving, which is really the problem solving that gets the project done. Some days you're out in the field and some days you're in the office and some days you're at public meetings. Um, it's rarely the same thing for more than a week. Uh, um, it's fast paced and it's enjoyable. You don't get worn down doing the same thing every day. Toronto. Amidst the beauty of this classic city is a world-class multimodal transportation system. For over four decades, they've been at the forefront of transportation technology. Intelligent Transportation Systems, or ITS, keeps the flow of traffic running safely and efficiently. My job is to detect the traffic and see where is the emergency. If there is any lane blockage batter, we can tell you if the left lane is blocked, center lane is blocked, or right lane is blocked. So with these changeable message signs, they're able to uh, notify the public, and also the media, people, anything goes wrong, people need to know. And we try and do the best we can to, to notify them of the changes. Fatalities in the city have gone down um, significantly over the past couple of years, and we think that may have something to do with the amount of speed bumps and safety programs that we're working on. We're correlating a lot with the police, He's coming from a distance. Um, sort of doing the studies with them and using them as an additional resource. Well, I, I'd say that uh, the breadth of transportation allows you, if you're interested in uh, computers and dot com, and look behind me, uh, that's involved in transportation. Where we're going in transportation to some degree is with intelligent transportation systems. It's making better use of what we have, and computers are a big part of it. Boston has found the use of computers vital to the Big Dig. Almost everything the Big Dig does involves innovative techniques, computer-aided design, all kinds of computer stuff. In fact, the bridge that we're standing on right now, the future Leonard Zakem Bunker Hill Bridge, is a 10-lane wide cable stay bridge. Every aspect of this bridge was designed by computers. It's probably the most computer-intensive computer piece of engineering done in North America including not just the design of the bridge, but the staging around the old highway system behind us so that we could figure out how to build pieces of this bridge while still maintaining good traffic flow for the six years it took to build this bridge. Technology lies in places you might not even think. The impacts that we have to the community, like the dust control, 
noise control, uh, keeping the traffic flows going while construction is taking place. I think that those sorts of issues are what you'll see being duplicated in other areas. Salt Lake City is like a kid in a candy store. We've kind of gone around the country and taken a lot of the best ideas from other places. Whenever a new technique comes along or a new challenge comes along, something's developed to meet that challenge and then somebody has to build it and make it work and that's where the transportation engineer comes into play. We can identify you know, any of the infrastructure in the city, you can just pull it right up. Uh, people call in, they have questions about something, we can pull their house up, we have aerial photography. We can pull it in, zoom right in and say, okay, in front of your house you have this, 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 this and this and uh, you know, we can tell them what they need to know. Young transportation professionals are finding that they've made the right choice. It's a career that is challenging, financially rewarding, and satisfying. The things you learn in college is all in the back of your head when you're dealing with real life situation and solving problems for real life people. I love it. I love trying to educate people and um, let them know about, um, first of all, some of the dangers so that they can be proactive and take care of that and also some of the things that we're doing, for instance, red light running, we're starting confirmation lights in the city and let them know about what's going on so that they can be aware that we're trying to make a difference too. There was one time I was able to go out with the GPS surveying equipment and we have a trail up here on the hills. It goes all throughout the whole city. It's called the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. And I got to go out, put my shorts on, strap on the equipment, hopped on my bike and I rode the whole trail. So I spent a whole day up in the mountains using the surveying equipment. It was great. You can see your final product is something that's tangible. You can see the improvements. If you've worked on um, improvements at a, like localized improvements at an intersection, you see the results. It's working better. There's an awful lot of planning going on and it's a pretty good blend between planning and engineering. There are a lot of numbers involved but it's not quite as clean cut number crunching as some of the disciplines. For one thing, a lot of people think that there's generally more money to be made in such fields as, I don't know, uh, electrical engineering or computer engineering, but uh, I know that there's a big shortage of uh, transportation engineers and there's a great need for them. So, and when there's a need, there's always more money involved with that. There are plenty of jobs out there right now. People are going to need facilities, people are going to need transportation, going to need buildings. Um, and we're, we're really the underlining uh, uh, motivation force, I think, uh, behind the economy that people just don't realize. You know, it's really important that you do what you enjoy. Uh, you're going to be doing it for a long time. Transportation is that field. 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 When you make a career in transportation, you are making a difference. For those who are interested, it's a great opportunity. Really anybody comes in with that attitude that they want to make a difference, and they want to do something to solve some problems, I think they'll go far. As more and more technologies advance, it um, becomes more and more interesting, I just want to get more into it. Evidence of your work, a physical structure that will always be there. The need for fundamental transportation will never go away. This is the place to be. It's how the city runs. There's just such a huge need. A lot of the things that we do just haven't been done before. And it's only getting broader and better. I make a difference.